Reading from Krishna Sanhita by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This is the introduction, part two. Sattvata Dharma, or non-sectarian Vaishnav Dharma, is the living entity's constitutional or eternal religious principle. But the Vaishnav Dharma that is found in the Mayavad Sampradaya is only an indirect imitation of those principles. When such sectarian Vaishnav Dharma becomes transcendental, that is, when it is freed from impersonalism, then it becomes Sattvata Dharma, or religious principles related with the Supreme Truth. The different sampradayas, namely Dvaita, dualism, Dvaita Dvata, simultaneously oneness and difference, Shruddhadvaita, purified oneness, and Vishistadvaita, specific monism, that are found in Sattvata Dharma, are nothing but wonderful varieties of sentiments within the Vaishnava science. Actually, the various sampradayas are not the result of differences in the basic truth. Impersonalism is diametrically opposite to the science of bhakti. Those Vaishnavas who have accepted impersonalism are not pure Vaishnavas. It is our duty to consider when and how Vaishnava Dharma has manifested in this country, India. Before we consider the subject, however, there are many other subjects that have to be resolved. Therefore, we will first resolve the dates according to modern considerations of the main events of India. Later, we will ascertain the dates of the esteemed scriptures. As soon as the dates of the scriptures are ascertained, then I will explain, according to modern opinion, the history of Vaishnava Dharma that is explained in those scriptures. Although we ourselves consider the dates of the scriptures according to ancient methods, I will now follow contemporary methods for the benefit of modern people. The very ancient history of India is covered by the dense darkness of forgetfulness because there is no proper sequence in its ancient history. I will establish with a bit of conjecture whatever I can on the information I have acquired through the four Vedas, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, and the Puranas. In the beginning, the Aryans lived in a small country named Brahmavarta, which was situated between the two rivers, Saraswati and Drishadvati. The present name of Drishadvati is Kagari. By discussing the meaning of the name Brahmavarta, it is assumed that the Aryans came from another country to reside therein. We cannot ascertain exactly where they came from, but it is believed that they came from some northwest country. When they came, they were relatively civilized according to the time. There's no doubt about this. Being proud, of their own civilization, they used to disregard the local natives. It is said that when the Aryans disregarded the local natives, the native's king, Rudradev, showed the Aryans his prowess by accepting in marriage the hand of Sati, the daughter of Prajapati Daksha, thus making an alliance with Daksha. Nevertheless, the Aryans were so proud that after the marriage of Sati, they did not respect her or her husband. That is why Sati hated herself and gave up her body in Daksha's sacrificial arena. And thereafter, Shiva, with his followers, began to heavily torture the Aryans. The Brahmins were later forced to make an alliance with Shiva by allowing him a share in the sacrifice. Still, in order to maintain their, their superiority, the Aryans placed Shiva's seat in the northwest corner of the sacrificial arena. There is no doubt that Daksha's fire sacrifice 
took place soon after the Aryans established Brahmavarta. Because the ten personalities headed by Daksha are described as the original Prajapatis. The wife of Prajapati Daksha was named Prashuti. She was the daughter of Swayambhuvamanu, the son of Brahma. Swayambhuvamanu and the Prajapatis were the original inhabitants of Brahmavarta. Another son of Brahma was Marichi, whose son was Kasyapa. The son of Kasyapa was Viviswan, whose son was Vivasvatamanu. The son of Vivasvatamanu was Ichvaku. From this, we must conclude that the Surya dynasty began with the sixth generation from Brahma. At the time of Maharaj Ichvaku, the Aryans were living in a place called Brahmarshi. According to modern calculation, the above mentioned six generations enjoyed their kingdom for 200 years. Because Brahmavarta was too small, it was expanded within this 200 years and called Brahmarshi. The Aryans were very eager to expand their dynasty, and they had so many children that Brahmavarta became too congested to suit their needs. Modern scholars say that some civilized personalities like Chandra were inducted into the Aryan race at that time. According to their calculation, in those 200 years, there were eight Manus, beginning from Swayambhuva Manu up to Vivasvatu Manu. Just after Swayambhuva Manu, the son of Agni, named Svarochisha Manu, appeared. The grandson of Swayambhuva Manu was Uttama Manu. He had one brother named Tamasamanu and another brother named Raivatamanu. In the seventh generation from Swayambhuvamanu was Chakshushamanu. Vivasvatamanu was the fifth generation from Brahma. Sarvani Manu was the stepbrother of Vivasvata. Therefore, all the Manus wound up their activities before the time of the Trakku. There is no doubt about this. Daksha Sarvarni, Brahma Sarvarni, Dharma Sarvarni, Rudra Sarvarni, Deva Sarvarni, Indra Sarvarni existed only in the imagination of modern people. If they were historical, then it is to be understood that they lived in different parts of India within those 200 years. It is also stated that the churning of the ocean took place during the time of Chakshushamana. Vamana appeared during the time of Vivasvatamana. After Bali Maharaj's sacrifice, all the demons were driven away by trickery. The kings of the Manu dynasty had their capitals outside Brahmavarta, but in the beginning they were not expert in managing their kingdom, education, or family life. Danvantari appeared during the churning of the ocean. The Asvini Kamaros also appeared at that time. The poison which emanated during the churning of the ocean was eliminated by Shiva of the Rudra dynasty. By discussing all these topics, we can understand that in those days the culture of medicine in progress. It is also seen that at this time the demon Rahu was cut in two and thus Rahu and Ketu were formed. We can understand from this that the science of astrology was being discussed at that time. It is not believed, however, that there was a written language during this time. And since there is no written information about that period, it appears that it lasted for a vast duration of time. In fact, much later, when calculation of time began, it is said that each Manu enjoyed a rule of 70 Maha Yugas. Among the kings, whoever, whoever laid down laws was called a Manu and was respected by all. 
There were two reasons why so many manus appeared in such a short span of time. First reason is that there was no written language or books, so knowledge was transmuted by shruti or hearing. The other necessary shrutis that were added to the original shruti were then ascribed to the reigns of the many different manus. The second reason is that due to an increase of population, the dwelling areas of the Aryans spread and divided into various areas with different kings ruling. Thus, there were many lawmakers or manus. This is the way modern scholars have described the different durations of manus. Swan-like people respect whatever substance may be derived from these topics, but transcendental explanations are often helpful for ass-like people. These explanations of transcendental characteristics and divisions of time were accepted in order to generate firm faith in such people's minds. The great sages accept the existence of different manus in order to benefit neophytes, and check the fantasies created at different times and places. We will never say that history and the process of calculating time according to the scriptures is false or imaginary. Modern scholars have stated that the names of the kings from Ikshvaku's time are available. The names of the kings in the Surya dynasty can be accepted with a great deal of certainty. From Ikshvaku to Ramachandra there were 63 generations if we consider that each king ruled the kingdom for 25 years, then the time from Ikshvaku to Ramachandra comes to 1,575 years. In the 94th generation, 94th generation of that dynasty, King Brihadbala was killed by Abhimanyu in the Battle of Kurukshetra. The Battle of Kurukshetra took place 2,350 years after the rule of the Chvaku. The duration of all Manvantaras together comes to 200 years. Therefore, we have to accept that the establishment of Brahmavata took place 2,550 years prior to the Battle of Kurukshetra. The duration of the Chandra dynasty king's rule is not very clear. From Ila, who was a contemporary of Ikshvaku, through Pururava and up to Yudhisthira, 50 generations are described. It is therefore difficult to accept that Sri Ramachandra appeared in the 63rd generation from Ikshvaku. Yet, long before Yudhisthira, if there were only 50 generations from Ila to Yudhisthira. Valmiki was a very ancient Rishi. Therefore, his calculations must be more accurate than the calculations of modern rishis. The kings of the Surya dynasty were very powerful, so their family priests wrote down the duration of their various kings' rules. There is no doubt about this. Rather, there is a mistake on the origin of the Chandra dynasty. Perhaps after the kings of the Surya dynasty ruled their kingdom for a long period, King Yayati became very powerful. Being unable to enter the Surya dynasty, Yayati decided to link his dynasty with the dynasty of Pururava Nahusha. Yet, even after doing this, he and many others from his dynasty were unable to establish a relationship with the Surya dynasty. King Ramapad, the friend of Dasarat, appeared in the 14th generation from Pururava in the dynasty of Anu, the son of Yayati. Kata Virajuna was born in the 16th generation from Pururavu in the dynasty of Yadu. He was the enemy of Parashuram. From this it is understood that King Yayati ruled his kingdom about 14, 13 or 14 generations before Ramachandra. That was the beginning of the Chandra dynasty. That is why they calculate their time in relationship with the Surya dynasty. In the beginning, the kings of the Surya dynasty lived on the bank of the Amuna at the place known as Brahmarshi. The tenth king of the Surya dynasty named Shravanta created Shravantapuri. It is stated in the Ramayana that the city of Ayodhya was established by Manu. 
Nevertheless, many people feel that Father Shvatamanu lived near the Amuna and his son Ikshvaku established Ayodhya and then resided therein. It is written that Ikshvaku's sons lived in Aryavata. Vaishali Puri was created by King Vishala, who was in the 25th generation for Vaimasvata. The city of Shravanti is situated about 60 miles north of Ayodhya, the capital of Koshala. The present name of this place is Sahet Mahet. The city of Vaishali is situated about 20 miles north of Putni. From this it is understood that the kings of the Surya dynasty powerfully ruled their kingdom from the Amuna to the Koshiki River on the western side of the Ganges. Gradually when the kings of the Chandra dynasty became powerful, the kings of the Surya dynasty became weakened. It is also said that up to the time of Mandata, the Aryans of the Surya dynasty used to call Matila and the nearby area around the Ganges as Aryavrata. But at the time of Bhagirat, who came just after King Sagara, the districts adjoining the Ganges up to the ocean were considered Aryavarta. Previous to this, it was concluded in the scriptures that if an Aryan died outside of Aryavarta, he would go to hell. At that time, Aryavarta extended only between the Himalayas and the Vindhyas. The descendants of King Sagara gave up their bodies at the place called Mlechadesha, Bengal, presently called Ganga Sagara. And until that place was included in Aryavarta, the descendants of the Surya dynasty were condemned. For this reason, many kings of the Surya dynasty, such as Dilipa, Amshuman, and Bhagirat, worshipped Brahma, the head of the Rishis, and established the land up to the Ganga Sagara as part of the Aryavarta. According to modern opinion, those kings spread the glories of the Ganges up to the ocean. Modern opinion is that it was not the waters of the Ganges that were taken to the ocean. Rather, it was the glories of the Ganges that were taken to the ocean. That is why the Manu Samhita describes Aryavarta as the area between the Himalaya and the Vindhya Mountains and stretching from the Eastern Ocean to the Western Ocean. The divisions of Aryavarta and Dakshinatya are thus accepted since the time of Bhagirat. Now I will explain the calculations of the four yugas according to modern opinion. Satya Yuga extends up to the time of King Mandata. Treta Yuga begins after Mandata and continues through the rule of Lava and Kusha. Dwarpa Yuga then lasts through the Battle of Kurukshetra. Satya Yuga consists of 650 years. Treta consists of 1,125 years. Dwarpa consists of 775 years. In this way, the total comes to 2,550 years. Vedic scholars, however, do not accept these conclusions. In the descriptions of the principal tirtas of the different yugas, it is mentioned that Kurukshetra was the tirta for Satya Yuga. Kurukshetra is situated near Brahmavarta. Pushkar, situated near Ajmera, was the tirta for the Treta Yuga. And in Dwarpa Yuga, Naimasharanya was the tirta. The present name of Naimasharanya is Nimkar or Nimsar. It is located about 44 miles northwest of Lucknow on the bank of the Gomati River. In the age of Kali, Ganges is the Tirtha. Just as Brahmavarta, Brahmarshi Desha, Madhya Desha, and ancient and modern Aryavarta were gradually established from time to time. Similarly, the Tirthas were all spread from Kurukshetra to Ganga Sagara during the expansion of the country. According to the advancement of the intelligence of people in a particular time, 
Different incarnations appear in different ages. As people advanced in religiosity, the mantras for the deliverance gradually blossomed. According to modern opinion, some of the major incidents that took place in the 2550 years prior to and including the Battle of Kurukshetra are the sacrifice of Daksha, the fight between the demigods and the demons, the churning of the ocean, the banishment of the demons to Patal Loka, the killing of King Vena, the bringing of the Ganges to the ocean, the killing of the Kshatriyas by Parashuram, the victory of Sri Ramachandra over Lanka, the journey of King Devapi and Maru to the village of Kalapa, and the battle of Kurukshetra. Apart from these, the scriptures relate many other incidents that took place. Modern scholars think that Daksha's fire sacrifice took place immediately after the Aryans established Brahmavarta. This strange incident happened due to the Aryans' pride of their caste and their unwillingness to maintain a relationship with the local natives. At that time, Bhutanath Rudra was the leader of the local natives. Most of the hill areas were under his jurisdiction. Bhutan or Bhutasthana, Kocha Vihara, and Kuchni Vihara, and Trivarta, where Kailas Mountain is seen, were all under Rudra's rule. Even though he was a local native, he was expert in the science of medicine, fighting, and singing. Seeing his ability, the eleven Rudra kings, who were his representatives, even claimed that he was the supreme controller. Such a personality as the king of the Rudras could not tolerate the Brahmin's false ego, so he forcefully and tactfully married the daughter of Prajapati Daksha, who lived at Kanchala near Harivara. After Sati Devi left her body, a fierce battle took place between him and the Brahmins. After the battle, he was given a share of the sacrifice and a seat in the northwest corner of the sacrificial arena. After that, the Aryans made friendship with the powerful local mountain people. Since then, we do not find any further quarrel between the local mountain people and the Brahmarshis because the mountain people respected the Brahmins and the king of the Rudras was counted among the lords of the Aryans. Although the Aryans no longer quarreled with the mountain people, many persons from their own dynasty put forward obstacles on the path of prosperity. The descendants of Kasyapa, who accepted the features of snakes and birds, started residing here and there under the subordination of the demigods. At that time, the descendants of Kasyapa, who accepted the features of birds, developed intense animosity toward the snakes. But later, the snakes became more powerful, and they ruled many kingdoms. Gradually, the birds became almost extinct. From the womb of Diti, the wife of Kasyapa, a few formidable men were born. They were condemned as demons. They became enemies of all good people by willfully acting against the Brahmarshas. Eventually, they quarreled with King Indra and established a separate kingdom. This quarrel became known as the battle between the demigods and the demons. Almost all the demons lived in the country known as Panchanada, the place of five rivers. Shakala, Asarar, Narasimha, and Multan, or Kasyapapura, were under their jurisdiction. It is possible that Prajapati Kasyapa, in whose family the demigods and demons were born, lived in the countries of Panchanada and Brahmavarta. The Prajapatis lived around Brahmavarta. At that time, Brahmavarta was the center of the demigods' kingdom. Both the Saraswati and the Drish Advati rivers flowed in the demigods' kingdom. Brahmavarta is the place that was founded by the demigods between these two rivers. From the word Deva in this verse, it is understood that the demigods were residing there. 
The demigods were also sons of Prajapati Kasyapa, and therefore they are also accepted as Aryans. It is felt that during the founding of Brahmavarta, just after the reign of Swayambhuva Manu, Indra, the son of Kasyapa and an expert administrator, was awarded the title of King of the Demigods. Those great souls who were engaged in the administrative work received different posts like Vayu, Varuna, Agni, Yama, and Pusha. Later, when others attained those posts, they were also known as Indra, Chandra, Vayu, Varuna. After the reign of Vivasvatu, the demigods became very weak. Their ruling of the kingdom continued simply in name. Wherever there were sacrifices, they were invited and shown respect. In this way, after some time, the great personalities of Brahmavarta were no more, and they became counted amongst the heavenly demigods. Their seats and shares and sacrifices of this planet were given to other invited Brahmins. The demigods then became known as Yantras and were invoked by Mantras. This is also seen in Jamini's Mimasa philosophy. In the beginning, the demigods were the rulers. Later, they became the enjoyers of shares of sacrifices. And finally, they were established in the scriptures in the form of Mantras. At the time when the demigods were ruling, the demons born from Kasyapa's other wife became greedy for the demigods' kingdom created many disturbances. The first battle between the demigods and the demons took place at the time of Haranyakashipu. The churning of the ocean took place a short time after this battle. During the battle between the demigods and the demons, Rihashpati was Indra's minister and Shukracharya was the demon's minister. Being unable to kill Hiranyakashipu, the Brahmins brought his son to the de de demigod's side with the help of Shanda and Amarka. Hiranyakashipu was then killed by the strength of providence. The grandson of Hiranyakashipu was Virochana. During his reign, an alliance was made between the demigods and the demons. By combining the intelligence of the demigods with the strength and industrial knowledge of the demons, the churning of the ocean of knowledge took place. Various excellent items like scientific opulences and nectar were produced. Later, by discussing knowledge of the self, poison in the form of renunciation of fruitive work and self-destruction was produced. Maharudra, who knew the spiritual science, controlled that poison by the power of science. The demons were tactfully deceived from obtaining nectar, and therefore another battle took place. The Asuras were de defeated in this battle, so they lived contented with their own kingdom for a long time. In the meantime, Brihaspati, the spiritual master of the demigods, was insulted by Indra and went off in seclusion. At this juncture, the demons again lit the fire of war on the instructions of Shukracharya. With the permission of Brahma, Indra accepted Vishvarupa, the son of Twashta, as his priest. Then, with various tactics, Vishvarupa helped the demigods defeat the demons. Vishvarupa used to drink wine, and due to his friendship with the Asuras, he devised a plan for the Asuras to capture Brahmavarta, Brahmavarta in return for a share of his sacrifices. For this reason, Indra killed him. Vishvarupa's father, Chvashta, thus became angry with Indra and started a revolt. His son, Vritra, joined the demons and began to harass Indra, and the demigods then decided to take shelter of Dadancha or Danichi. At the death of Dadyancha, Vishvakarma, the, with hard labor and scientific methods, created a Vajra, or thunderbolt. Then Indra killed Vritra, 
with the help of the Radra, and he became condemned as the killer of a Brahmin. Along with other Brahmins, Tvashta exiled Indra for some time. At that time, Indra lived near Manasarovara. The Brahmins quarreled among themselves, but were unable to find a proper candidate for the post of Indra. Finally, they decided to install Nahusha, the grandson of Pururava, as the king. In a short time, Nahusha developed a tendency to neglect the Brahmins, so the Brahmins reinstalled Indra as the king after sending Nahusha back to his previous duties. The battle between the demigods and the demons took place at Kurukshetra near Brahmavarta. There is no doubt about this because Indra killed Vritra and went northeast to Manasarovar to reside. It is also proved that Dadichi Muni previously lived near Kurukshetra. Some people say that three raised hillocks called Tripishtapa may be found either at Kurukshetra or northern Brahmavarta. On the instigation of Shukracharya, the demons gradually became powerful, and because the demigods were unable to check them, they took the help of Vamanadeva. By Vamanadeva's tactics, the demigods thus drove King Bali and his followers from the area of Tripishtapa. Perhaps the Asuras took a vow to live on the bank of the river Sindhu at the place known as Sindhu. At that time, the place was known as Patala because the descendants of the Nagas resided there. The descendants of the Nagas, such as Elapatra and Takshaka, resided in that country for many years. After the Asuras resided there for many years, they returned to reside at Tripishtapa. At that time, the lake known as Elapatra and the city known as Takshashila were founded. The Nagas also lived in the province of Kashmir. Elaborate descriptions of this are found in the Raj Tarangini. King Bali was in the fifth generation from Kasyapa during his reign. The Asuras were tactfully exiled. During his reign, the Asuras were tactfully exiled to Patala. And we'll take a, another little break here.